So for anyone who doesn't know me, uh, my name's Valeska. I'm a, a material scientist uh, originally, um, but um, my area of research is really on nanoporous materials. So these are any materials uh, such as zeolites, uh, porous carbons or metal organic frameworks, porous polymers, for example, uh, which have uh, tiny pores or voids on the, on the nanometer um, or angstrom scale. And anyone who's ever seen a talk by me will, will be familiar with this analogy of molecular sponges, because these materials, um, because of their porosity and their high surface area, they spontaneously interact with hydrogen and, and will suck in the hydrogen into the pores um, like a sponge will water. And that makes them incredibly useful for, for storing hydrogen at lower pressures and higher densities than you would get otherwise. Um, and my role in, in this story is, is that I'm interested in uh, experimental investigations of uh, the interplay between the structure of these porous materials and, and their properties, um, what makes them appropriate for, um, for hydrogen storage and, and how do we engineer better materials with the information that we have so that we can use such materials in, in things like uh, onboard uh, storage of hydrogen um, and, and also for, um, uh, as, as we'll see, for, for um, manipulating the properties, uh, the properties of the stored hydrogen. Um, but first of all, I was asked to, to talk about my involvement in the um, H2FC supergen. And, um, and although this, uh, this timeline starts in 2012, the, the story actually starts with uh, the UK Shek, which, um, uh, which uh, Tim headed. And uh, I went to talk to Tim in 2010 uh, because I, I was interested in uh, some work at Bath uh, looking at different types of materials. And I, I was pointed in, in Tim's direction and I'd never considered chemical engineering before, but, but uh, his enthusiasm for it and, and the way he described um, the, the problems and the, um, and the challenges associated with, with engineering um, that really inspired me. And so uh, in, in 2012, when, when the H2FC Supergen started, I was a postdoc and, and the networks um, were really influential for getting me up to speed with uh, the technical aspects of hydrogen. So I'd, I'd worked in characterization of hydrogenous materials before, but never on the, uh, the, the testing and the uh, the engineering considerations that, that you would need for a practical system. So, uh, so going to the the meetings and uh, and getting to know the community was really important, um, and uh, and also yeah, just just to get up to speed with the technical challenges and and to become more comfortable with the engineering side. So that was great. Um, in in 2013, I I got uh, a, a fellowship, so I was a prize fellow with Smart Nanomaterials, as I recall, from um, in Bath, and uh, and full credit. Um, I I think the one of the main reasons that I I got this fellowship was because um, I I learnt a lot from Tim in terms of of uh, developing research and and being a good researcher. Like I, I'm not just saying it because he's chairing the session, it's true. Um, but also uh, the, the things that I learned here um, uh, from the H2FC Supergen um, was about uh, going, making that jump from a postdoc to a research fellow, expanding out the links and, and networking, um, those sorts of initial collaborations that I had through the Supergen were extremely important. So I met a lot of early career researchers through the network. Uh, for example, Dan Reed, who, who spoke first in this session. Um, we had some small projects. Um, I, I recognized some of the, uh, some of the data that, that uh, Dan presented because we, we worked on um, some, some of that work together. Um, in addition, uh, the one of the beauties of, of the H2FC Supergen is the diversity of researchers. So, so talking to Paul Dodds about, about policy um, uh, made me think about uh, going into uh, the MP pairing scheme um, for the Royal Society, and we wrote a, a policy brief on that. Um, I, I started working with industry, and so, um, so that was really uh, influential in my next step, becoming a lecturer. Um, so building on those networks, I was able to apply for funding through the um, H2FC Supergen. 
uh, and it's incredibly hard to find pots of funding when you're a, a new academic. Uh, and so that that allowed me uh, the funding from the H2FC. It allowed me to hire my first postdoc. Um, I was able to get letters of support from um, from industry collaborators and also from Nigel um, from the H2FC Supergen. And that led to my um, my fellowship that that I hold now. And it, it, it uh, contributed to um, uh, to my promotion to professor. I have no doubt about that. And and through my um, uh, through my position now, I'm able to mentor and help others um, within the, the hydrogen and fuel cells community. Um, and so there's there's this sense of being able to give back and and also to to help shape um, shape the the field and and. Um, perhaps the funding landscape through through things like the EPSRC Energy Strategic Advisory Committee. Um, so a long journey with Supergen. Uh, I just wanted to give you a few um, uh, a few highlights of the work that we've been doing with Supergen. Uh, so there are many different strands. One one uh, one that I wanted to highlight was on material synthesis, uh, looking at uh, taking waste lignin and converting it into hydrogen storage materials. Um, so these these carbon based materials were uh, resulting from one of my very first industry collaborations and and it was a real eye opener seeing what sort of things uh, uh, were important for uh, eventual scale up and industrial use of of, um, uh, of any sorts of materials. So uh, resilience and, and reproducibility were key. Um, I was interested to, to hear uh, Dan Reed talk about isotope separations because that's that's also another um, another area that I'm quite interested in looking at hydrogen and deuterium challenging isotope separations. Um, you've, got, you've got one minute left uh, Valeska. Perfect thanks. Um, uh, uh, something that's quite close to my heart is is um, looking at the uh, at the characteristics of, of hydrogen once it's inside a porous material using techniques like like neutron scattering uh, and I, I also wanted to mention a, a recent piece of work looking at the combination of uh, experimental work and modeling uh, that that we've just submitted. And so you, you'll see the names associated with um, with this work and all of them were in some way associated with the, the H2FC Supergen. Um, Nuno Bimbo, for example, is, is another um, member of Tim's group who's gone on in, um, to a lectureship in Southampton and is starting his own group. Same with me, Tian, and Gemma Rowlandson is now a lecturer in Bristol. Um, so my last word is just on future directions for hydrogen. And um, all I wanted to say was that the, the problems are complex. And the, the way that I see it going into the future is that we now need to, to capitalize on the momentum for um, from industry and from government to, um, to meet our net zero targets. And so we all have an obligation to look at these um, uh, these practical applications and large scale deployment of hydrogen um, if we're going to take all this great research that we've done in the lab and and roll it out into society. Um, just a few thank yous, but there are many, many more people to thank, um, but I'll hand back over to Tim.